Washington, D.C. Now, as I already mentioned, last Saturday the people of Iceland voted overwhelmingly massively. It was a massive repudiation of the banker's dictatorship, which is essentially the uh, pr predominant form of government in the Western world, in the U.S., Europe and uh, Japan, but here we have Iceland, population one one-thousandth of the U.S., 330,000 people on this island at the top of the North Atlantic, and they say no, nay, to the bankers. Now, uh, we want to go back to our uh, correspondent there in Reykjavik, to Rauren Einarsson, and see what's happening now in the uh, aftermath. But before that, Rauren, can you give us a, a kind of a first-person account of what it was like on Saturday, Sunday when the voting was going on and when the results came in and, and some, some color commentary on the ground, so to speak? Well, it was uh, kind of a bit surprising that uh, the no was over 90 or about 93 percent, more than uh, we, we saw in the poll. So, of course, people were very happy about it. But, uh, you know, during the day, people were in a good mood. Uh, they, they were marching down the street and uh, having a protest and uh, in the night we just saw good results it turned out that uh, the people who were going to say yes they uh, they rather uh, you know stayed at home instead of voting so that uh, is maybe the explanation we only got uh, you know less than two percent saying yes but there were actually people who actually did so, Rowan, what was the turnout? How many, what was the percentage of those who voted compared to those who didn't vote? Yeah, it was 63% um, that showed up. So uh, it, that's, um, that's more than you get on anything here in the U.S. Yeah, I, I guess it's um, perhaps common ratio in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, in European uh, referendum. Uh, it's, of course, less than... Uh, and in usual uh, parliamentary elections, but uh, of course many people got the message from the the prime minister and finance minister and not to vote and just stay at home, like they did. They, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, finance minister and prime minister they uh, declared they would not participate. They would stay at home. Well, now in the wake of it, what, what has emerged? And we know that Johanna Sigurdsdottir, the prime minister, the social democrat, the eurocrat, eurocar, she wants to come back and try again. She wants to find a way to pay. What is she up to? Yes, of course. She, she is still in that mode. But I think the people of Iceland are really uh, changing the course. That, uh, there was a poll recently that said that 60% uh, of Icelanders just absolutely don't want to or, or, don't, or don't, don't think it's right that uh, Icelanders pay anything. And, right. uh, but, of course, uh, uh, Johanna is still, uh, you know, going the way to Europe, to the e EU, and uh, she just uh, wants to comply, like, well, like the government in general. So they will do anything. But I, I feel now that there is a different uh, atmosphere um, on the way that, uh, for example, uh, I just had a meeting last night where people are uh, thinking to organize a conference in a group to, uh, to change the, um, the Constitution you know, on, on their own, to, um, uh, to have you know, great meetings where people come together and actually change the Constitution by themselves and then get it changed that way from their own, uh, own efforts. And, and I think that this, this kind of thinking is, can I warn against is getting more apparent now. So, Rauren, let me warn against this, because reforms of the government process, formal reforms of government, are generally a diversion from the real issues at hand. In other words, if you're going to spend time organizing, I would strongly recommend get out there with a program that says make the bankers pay. We won't pay is number one. Make the bankers pay. Tobin tax, 1% tax on banking turnover, derivatives, stocks, bonds, 
and all the rest of this stuff. Make, make the bankers pay for the crisis, and then join, now that we have the Greece uh, uh, crisis going on, join in the European effort to say ban credit default swaps. So certain kinds of derivatives can be taxed, and you get money for the public treasury. But other than that, credit default swaps, these so-called insurance policies, they have to be banned, outlawed outright. And we just heard that even Barroso at the European Commission, Merkel, uh, Sarkozy and others, they're all demanding an end to credit default swaps. Now, that would be concrete, right? Rather than say we're going to change the Constitution, which takes forever, and ultimately it's not going to work. Yeah, but the, the thing is that uh, what is good about it is that it really motivates people, and and, and it's, it's a part of the process that people are feeling that uh, not only that they, uh, they have the power, but uh, they have to sort of use it and, you know, take it in their own hands. It, it, it is, uh, it is something to it, so be a part of, and, and it, it will be important. But also this, uh, what you suggested has been, um, well, we have the attack here in Iceland uh, promoting these kind of ideas. And, Who is that again? Who? Huh? Who, who promotes them? No, I mean, we, we have... You know, the organization ATAC in Iceland. What is it? Tell us. No, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the ATAC is an international group that is uh, promoting, for example, uh, the Tobin tax and uh, uh, re-regulating -re the financial system. And I think it's a pretty big, big group here in Iceland that is, um, uh, has founded the um, Icelandic ATAC group. And it recently went to Norway. And to, uh, they had actually a meeting with the Norwegian government, which, uh, by the way, now is changing their position on the ITF that uh, they are willing to give loans, uh, disregarding the outcome of the ITF dispute. That the, and that's a big change from before. I'm just recommending. What you need now is a direct attack on the bankers. In other words, not the reform of government so much, but the, the attack on the bankers so that you're actually essentially waging a class struggle against the bankers. Mobilizing people to fight bankers is the, the main demand of the hour. And change actually, the, I, I, I should say that the, 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 we have made this kind of attack that there is now a people on, a, well, you could say it was a pay strike, people who have of paying the debts, and uh, as a as a group, it's a group action, and also people are uh, encouraged to take out their money from uh, these specific banks, the big banks, and uh, get it to a uh, smaller banks or saver banks. And uh, this actually started uh, last February 19th, and uh, this could also grow momentum. This this kind of action. Let me point out, though, that what you need is a mass movement that is something which brings people together in an organized form, not something that you do alone, not something of isolated people moving bank accounts from one bank to another. This is, frankly, not very radical. This is at the level of Ariana Huffington and the Huffington Post. But something where you say, thank you, I'm going to strike at you directly. I'm going to do something against you. Yep. Sorry, I had some problem here with the kids. <laughs> we understand perfectly. Thank you, Thoraren. Hang in there. Okay. You come back. No? Anyway, I'm recommending that what you need to do is find organized forms of, of uh, resistance against bankers. Thank you, Thoraren. We'll see you next week.